Good evening, everybody, and welcome to another great episode of PA Sprint Car Live right here on Bear Hill Gang TV. Good evening. I'm Earl Hoon Jr. Of course, you know, my trusty sidekick, Mr. Burt Lochek. And Burt, we have a special one in for tonight. Boy, I tell you what, Earl, what a great week it's been. We just had the World of Outlaw Cross Sprint Car Series in. Now, this week, we had the Dario Tribute release at the Williams Coast Speedway this Friday night. We cannot wait here, and that's why we are out here at the Dario Shop. That's right. We are live on location. Here in Pennsylvania, Maryland, wherever, right on the border. Almost in West Virginia. Right here at Walt Dyer's Race Shop, folks. That's right. They invited us down. We're going to shoot a great episode inside here. Tell all kinds of race and tales. Some may be true. Some may be false. We're going to look <laughs> at some great memorabilia. I can't even talk right now. I'm so excited. But, Bert, I can't wait to hear some of these stories. I can't wait. You know, there's always some great stories coming out of the race shop and come out, you know, different drivers. And I know Walt has a ton of stories. And I think there might be even a car in here that won a few races back in the day. No doubt about it. We'll get right back to that. But first, let's go knock on the door and see if we can, you know. Let see if anyone's here. Go ahead and knock on the door, door Bert. Welcome to my shop. Come on in. How are you, Walt? All right. This is Carl. He's a car guy with a passion for performance. When he needed a part, he visited PacePerformance.com. He called Pace and found the right part at the right price. Pace has one of the largest inventories of Chevrolet Performance and genuine GM parts and accessories. Carl can really make his engine purr with a custom build. Now that's one-stop shopping. Pace delivers speedy service so Carl can get to spend more time doing what he loves. Be like Carl. Visit PacePerformance.com or call toll-free. Welcome back, everybody. We are inside the man, the myth, the legend, Walt Dyer's Race and Shop. Walt, thank you for inviting us in. I'm glad you all came. Bert, we just got done walking around in here, and, and just look at all the history that is here. In there is way. so much history here, including a suit worn by this man way back in the day, Lance Luis. Lance, thanks for uh, joining us as well today, sir. Well, my pleasure. I enjoy it. Anytime you guys ask me, come on. Uh, <laughs> Thank you that. for coming on. That's right, folks. This coming week is the special Walt Dyer Memorial, I shouldn't say Memorial, Walt Dyer Tribute Race <laughs> at the Crofia yeah, Fool. Sorry, bud. <laughs> I didn't mean to say oh, that. Boy! Uh, oh, which, well, this is a great start. No <laughs> doubt about it. Which we invite everybody to come out uh Tomorrow and, and enjoy the race and, you know, check out this good old 461 that is right behind us. Which, by the way, Bert, did you know that this car that's located right behind us, that man, Lance Deweese, swept the National Open Weekend back in 1996. Oh, well, yeah, you told me when we walked in here. I did. I had to. <laughs> I had to. I love this car. And, and, Lance, we'll start with you. And we'll go. We'll start off with 1996. Man, how'd you do it? Sweep the National Open? That, at the Grove, I mean, back then when these cars were built the way they are, compared to the cars they are built now, how'd you do it? Well, we were pretty good that, from, what do you think, but 94, 95, 96, we were, we were really good, and um, we, you know, we always were in the hunt, and we just kind of put ourselves in a position on Friday night, and amazing about that, if I remember correctly, on Saturday, we ate, raced Hagerstown on Saturday, um, for Oktoberfest, yeah. we qualified wow. because they used to be the same weekend. Yeah, yeah. So we'd run Friday night at the Grove, and then we turn around and have to race sa Saturday afternoon to Hagerstown, and then leave and go to the Grove for Saturday night. So it, it kept it busy. But what's nice back then, they were locked the top four in. Yeah, right. We won. We locked in. So you know, if Hagerstown ran a little late, we were still golden. We didn't have to worry about it. if we had problems at Hager's time we had time to get ready for the grow but you know we we were pretty good on both places and both days that's crazy now but what did that those years mean to you because i mean obviously it's one of the more successful time frames there with lance in the car but what did those years mean to you winning those two yeah yeah well i guess that's the highlight of my career to beat the outlaws two nights in a row was it's something to beat them one night, but then when you back it up, uh, I remember Stewart, he was out on a business trip, and he called back said, who won Friday night at the Grove? And they said, Lance DeWeese. And he said, well, good. And then next night he called back and said, who won the Grove? He said, Lance DeWeese. He said, that was last night. Who won the night? <laughs> <laughs> you know, Lance, this man has pretty much put you on the map back in the day when you really got your career started as doing this as a profession and, and he's the one that really gave you your first ride so my question to you all is how'd you find lance 
Well, I shouldn't tell him this, but my wife hired him. Oh, oh. okay. All I right. had uh, Joey Allen, but Joey was doing a pretty good job. He was leading the points at Port Royal, and, and Lance was out there, and someone's car. Well, then I had a couple of them. We, the 90 car, the 4 car that same year. I kind of was run both of them cars. It kind of was a mix between my own car and, and the 90 car. So. Mm -hmm. I said uh, to my wife, I said, there's a driver. If he had a good car, he'd win some races. She said, well, you've got three cars. Put him in one. Well, you got to listen to the boss. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, I didn't know the next night he drove for Weigert and won. And then the next week he drove for me and won. Which a lot of people never realize that. Um, we kind of already were working on putting the car together and getting it ready. And Weigert called me. And asked me to drive, run his car, and I said yes, you know. But I'm going to drive Dyer's car, you know, the following weekend. Right. So just you know, just a one race deal. So I, I was fortunate enough to win that night with Wiker. Then the very next Saturday we won with Bud, and then kind of was off from there. No doubt about it. Definitely a great combination for, I mean, how many years you were in this 461 for? Seven and a half. Seven, seven. seven and a half years. You guys lead records. You you know, you win. You're the all-time winner in a score of 50. As I mentioned on Facebook a couple days ago, I'm uh, pretty sure you're, you're the all-time winner at the Grove in the National Open. No. No? no. Um, that's either Shots or Steve Kinzer, I think. Okay. Well, you have, we have, you have, have three. He's second three, in yeah. all time wins at the group. Yeah, yeah behind Fred Raymer, which yeah. watch out, Fred. That might be coming. Might be coming close here. What are you four away? I think three away. Three. Three, three. away. Look out! That could be, be talking about an all time winner at the Grove by the end of the season. Well, we could be talking about it by the end of next or by the end of the Apple weekend. No you doubt. You never know. What makes Lance so different than from all the other drivers? Had you know, we were looking on the back of a T-shirt. Earlier, Bud, and you know, you had Jimmy Mays, Joe Gravino, Joey Allen, uh, Van May, Dumb May, all kinds of great legends. But what makes him so different than all the other drivers you had? Well, uh, everyone talks about the Allens having a smooth foot, but I think Lance has a smoother foot than the Allens. Yeah. And that's saying a good bit. Uh, he didn't beat the cars up. He. He still doesn't. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's true. Yeah, I mean, he just drives them as hard as you can drive them without tearing them up. It's just talent. It's like any other sport. Uh, some's got it, some don't. No he doubt just, about it. And, and he just had it. Yeah, Lance does have it. Now, and trust me, it's hard for him to be saying things like this. <laughs> <laughs> if I would leave, it would be probably better. Yeah, right. Because <laughs> trust me, the last thing he wants to do is give anybody a compliment. Right. 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 He right. will behind her back, but not in front. <laughs> well, you know, he quit me two or three times. I said, get your behind back in here. We're going to race. <laughs> you know, Lance, over the years, uh, you talk about, well, being pretty much your second dad. And, and why, why is that? Well, I spent as much time with him and Marsha as I did with my own parents for seven and a half years. And, you know, they treat everybody like family. Mm -hmm. I mean, the whole family, as you've seen just a little bit that you've been here, you know, with the, the other family members and all it, it's it's a giant family i mean you and trust me by the looks of you guys you don't you don't go without food oh thank you yeah, <laughs> you ain't wrong bud thank you, you ain't man. wrong bud <laughs> they would have loved our son our saturday lunch before we left for port Earl, mm. wouldn't they bud yes yes um yeah, everyone got fed everyone got fed and there's a screened in porch over there next to the house that yeah, we'd be working on the race cars, and Marsha would and get us food ready, and you go over there, and it's food. Yeah. yeah it's food. It's not <laughs> no little thing. It's good, a good home cooking. Yeah. And, um, yeah, that was every Saturday, almost. You know, only times that probably didn't happen is if they had functions that they had to deal with or if, you know, we were in a big hurry or something. Yeah, but, you know, you, you were just like family. And, um, yeah, and that's a lot of the race teams yeah. that I've ever been involved with. There's only a few that... I can say you're not as tight with as others, but a lot of the race teams are treated yeah, like family. But he gave me the shot I needed, um, took the chance on me, and I owe everything for him, to him for that. No doubt about it. Now, when you got the phone call, quote-unquote, or, or however you got the notification from what, be like, hey, I want you to come drive for me. 
uh, how'd you feel when you this is your first big time ride like i said and how'd you feel when when this legend right here next to you gave you a phone call well i don't know if it really was a phone call i think it, it was a roundabout transition of words from somebody else to somebody <laughs> else to me <laughs> if i remember correctly i think donnie timmons was told or was asked and i don't know if we really ever talked initially about it so it kind of was like between different parties at the time, if I remember correctly. I don't remember. You don't remember? Well, I didn't expect anybody to remember. But, <laughs> <laughs> but um, I can't remember what I had for breakfast. <laughs> <laughs> so it was just, um, you know, anybody that knew me back then, and even now today, I'm I'm really relaxed here. But I was a very quiet person and mm -hmm. kept to myself, and I was now going. I never self promoted myself, and um, I think that's why we had seven and a half years of really good times. Is me and him a lot like as far we do what we love to do. Mm -hmm. He's a very hard worker, as you can see. Yeah, and um, it just it just matched up everybody. Everybody got along so good that that worked on the race car. It was just unbelievable, in my opinion. And you know, it was no paid crew members at all. Right. And it just you know for you know it just was a great time. Now you had 132 wins in this car here. At what point did you realize, hey, this is something special? We're going to be going down in history as probably one of the greatest combinations in Central PA and even in the country in uh, dirt track racing. Never, never thought about it. Would you say, but I never yeah, thought about yeah, it. Yeah. All we did worry about the next race. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm um, really no different than how I race now. Mm -hmm. We just worry about the next race when the first one's over, and and you never think about, you know, yes, I'm getting inducted to the Hall of Fame, but but you know, you don't. I don't think anybody racing mm -hmm. thinks about this many wins or this success down the road. Mm -hmm. They just want to do the best they can mm -hmm. at the time and, and try to win right now. No doubt about it. Well, folks, we're going to take our first commercial break. When we come back, we're going to have more from these guys. Stay tuned. It is showtime at Williams Grove Speedway. Kick off your Memorial Day weekend with us this Friday night at the Williams Grove Speedway as we will honor legendary car owner Walt Dyer with the Walt Dyer Tribute Race for the Lord's Chevrolet 410 Sprint Cars as they go 25 lives paying $4,610 to win. Come early and join the Burial Game TV boys to bring you a special edition of PA Sprint Car Live with past drivers of Dyer Masonry 461 and see Lance Dewey's drive the Brickmobile around the Grove one more time. Also on the cars, Bureau Game, PA Sprint Series, 305 Sprint Cars. The Williams Grove Speedway is just located one mile from the Lisburn Road Age and about 15 and minutes from Mechanicsburg and Dillsburg. For more information on upcoming events and up-to-the-minute news, follow Williams Grove on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and Snapchat, or log on to WilliamsGrove.com. The Williams Grove Speedway is a proud supporter of PA Sprint Car Live right here on Bureau Gang TV. And we are back here on Bureau Gang TV, PA Sprint Car Live. My name is Bert Wojcik, alongside Earl Hood Jr. We are here at the Dyer uh, shop, the museum, I guess you want to call it, with Walt Dyer and Lance DeWeese. And, Walt, let's start with you here. We were talking before we came in here about how you got your first car back in, I believe, in the 50s, and it was the old dollar sign car. Can you tell us a little bit about that story? Well, it, I was building a church over in Waynesboro, where it was within about a block of Lance's home. Mm -hmm. And I got to work, and it was raining, and I'd already talked to G.H. Bird down in Fairfax, Virginia, about buying the dollar sign, which Jack Dennison ran to a lot of victories, uh, which was an old modified. And I said to my men, do you all want to ride along with me? I had a couple of fellows in the truck. They said, oh, yeah, we'll go with you. So that's 1967. We rode down to Fairfax, Virginia, and picked up the, this first car, which, like I say, was the old dollar sign, and I changed the number to 46 because John Eversold ran a late model, and his number was 46, and he had a girl four years old and a boy six years old, so that's how he got his number, mm -hmm. and since he was be my driver, I just thought, well, I'll just use his number because he wasn't going to run a late model anymore. Well, I got to Hagerstown Speedway that first week and Bill Walsh was there from Johnstown and he had number 46 and back then you it's not like now you did not run two cars with the same number someone had to change and since I was new on the circuit of course I'm the one who had to change well I just took mask and tape and put a one in front of the <laughs> in front of the 46 and 
that week, my wife and I got to look down, and we didn't like the looks of that, so we had the sign painter come put the one on the other side of the six, and it's been 461 ever since that. That's how the 461 originated. How about that? No doubt. And a, a number that will go down in history. Oh, for sure. And those back in the day, too. Those were all hand painted cars, correct? Like it's yeah. not like today where you have all these wraps and all that. That was true hand painted. Um, see, George Paler was my first sign painter. He could paint anything. He would paint an eagle on your car or anything at all. I mean, he didn't only do letters. He could do pictures. I mean, yeah, he was an artist. He, he was an artist, and, and you're an artist when it comes to building buildings out of masonry and, and everything you did. Do a hell of a job, folks. Uh, we were just here on uh, on the other side of the shop that we're in now. Believe it or not, there's an old built brick shit house. I love that. I love it. I absolutely love that. Not many places you go can have that <laughs> or have that anymore, even have, out, even have outhouses. But what made you want to get into racing, Walt? Um, was it, you know, going as a child or well, just a love for it? You all know as old as I am, but back when they had the old Model A's, cut down after the war. Mm -hmm. They had a racetrack three miles from the house here, down here along the creek. My dad and I, we'd go on Sunday afternoon, watch them old fellas run these model A with a roll bar on behind the right. head. <laughs> and I went to the races like Langhorn, Williams Grove, pretty regular. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, I just love racing, of course. I've got a few speeding ticks to show you. I like speed. Yeah, you, you were telling us a little story about getting pulled over uh, up in Tower City, up in his area, coming home from Big Diamond oh in a trailer. Lord. In the old truck and trailer, folks. Get a Seals Grove. Oh, Seals Grove? Yeah. yeah. No doubt about that. Um, there I go say, no doubt about it. Yeah, it there you go. Playing, that, was, that was, what, 29 last Yeah, if you're playing now? a drinking game, folks, now it's time to start. Uh, Lance, when you walk in here, what emotions do you get when you cross that double door right there and you come in here and just soak it all in again? Well, I just got emotions driving over here because some of the ways that we come brings back a lot of memories. Um, you know, just the people I've met over here and the guys that's helped me, you know, when I was here and just, just everything. You know, this car behind me, you know, behind us, you know, won my first big race ever. Yeah. So that was very, you know, that's the, look, to me, that's my biggest win. That meant the most. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, it's not the biggest win dollar value or anything like that. You know, that happened last year with Tux for fifty, but that was my biggest win. That meant the most. And um, you know, I've been fortunate enough to win three of them so far and hopefully a fourth one sometime soon. But um, you know, it just everything. It, it's just you know, it was the start of my career, you know, the the whole family aspect, you know, I mean I have lots of memories with Bud and us going to Florida and you know, it's just it, it. He was always a blast to be around, and you know, we just we just always got along so good and had fun. And, um, it just it was just you know, it just it was always a blast. I got a feeling, but you got a story. <laughs> What's the story? Of this? Well, the first time I took him to Florida, you know, I had Sugar Ray. Yeah, the dog. And Lance was just a kid then, and we did. He just stayed with Marsha and I in our room. Just the same as if, if it had been my son. Mm -hmm, you know? Right. And uh, he didn't open up the bed on the other side. The covers was tucked in real tight, and he just got into one side. Well, after he went to sleep, Sugar Ray saw his chance, so he gets in. <laughs> Lance couldn't get out of bed. <laughs> That's a true story, Sugar Ray. I climbed in bed, and I didn't, um, you know how hotels, are, you know, they talk. I didn't untuck to one side. I just climbed in. Right. Well, Sugar Ray got up against my back and laid in there, and I couldn't get out. Sugar, I told Sugar, move, cause he's, and he, he's sound asleep. And if, if he, you guys were not old enough to remember Sugar Ray. Uh, don't, yeah, but, I remember. But, I mean, he was such a great dog, and he was such fun to be around. And, you know, it just he was just like, you, you knew he was just like a kid, part of the, the family. And it just was a blast. And, you know, the, the rides with Sugar Ray sitting in the pasture he was like a human being sitting there <laughs> yeah, and he would do it and a lot of dogs do this but you hopped out of the driver's seat and he was sitting there like, behind that steering and you swear he's driving just by the looks of him yeah, just, <laughs> you just swear he's driving but yeah he was such a big part of this he'd, whole sit, team and, he'd sit in the pasture seat of the rig and pass the tractor and trailer he would look over at the dryer and those dryers would laugh at him something there. <laughs> he would look over he just like a human being around us and, but he was such a good dog and 
you know, it, it was just like a kid to all of us, and it was funny. Yeah, we we had some pretty pretty good experiences going to Florida and back, and you know, and like I said, you know, I owe everything to this man sitting next to me, and um, you know, I'll never forget you know what he's done for me, and you know, even the, you know today he was kind enough to come out to Mansfield to watch me yeah. not race very well. Yeah, yeah you know, <laughs> even, but you know, it's it's just you know. You know, you can't forget where you come from. Right. And I, I don't believe I ever, ever forgot where I come from. And, um, you know, there's a lot of memories. You are seeing us paint these cars and wings. Probably people don't realize that, bud, huh? That no. these wings and these cars are all painted here. Right, right, right. 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 Yeah, the right. bricks and, you wow. know, that's, that's not a simple job. Not right. like nowadays where they can print it. Yeah, yeah right. exactly. All um, hand painted. How yeah. long do you think it took about to paint all this stuff? Well, it was three different nights to do it. Really? Yeah. The uh, first night you put primer on it. Next night you put white on it. Then you got to tape it. Right. For the and then you spray the red. So it's three <laughs> night operation. Three night process yeah. to get a whole that. car painted. And it was a it was a really great paint booth that we worked in, wasn't it, Bud? Oh yeah. Well, oh, I can't wait. Be good. Well, where'd you do it? I can't wait to hear this. Over the garage, garage. right behind us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, me and Bud come out of there when we're doing the red. And we're just red from head to toe. <laughs> like there was no the masonry. There was no respirator. Yeah, no, I can probably had double vision for a couple of days. Well, about everything over is still red. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. There wasn't. There wasn't a, the a vent was probably a fan sitting in the doorway trying to draw the fumes out. <laughs> Yeah, you know, with him, what did you think about with Lance, you know, getting a notification and getting inducted to the National Sprint Car Hall of Fame well, this year thought, out of Knoxville? I thought he deserved it. Yeah? Man, yeah? You think, you think he's good enough to get in the Hall yeah, of Fame? I thought he deserved it. Yeah, not bad. <laughs> I, guess we're, I guess we'll go out. Yeah? Yeah? Go out and just watch him out there, yeah. get on stage, and maybe get it in somebody's car mm -hmm. out there. Yeah, we actually, we tried to work on that a little bit, but... I don't think they race wing cars that night. I think it's oh, non-wing. Okay. Oh, exactly. I think oh. it's non-wing from oh. my understanding. Well, speaking of non-wing, you can still do non-wing. And and Bud and I were looking at a couple pictures over there, early '90s, I guess, when either USAC or CRA came to the Grove there, and you almost won that race. He was telling me that you were pulling in uh, Billy Pouch there when it was yeah. in his number one until that red flag came out. Yeah. Well, two things that kept us from winning that race: the red, the red. <laughs> And Davy Brown. And Davy Brown. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, Davy Brown was working with the Zemco team. Was working with Zemco at the time. Um, we we by far had the fastest car. Yeah. Once we got going, mm -hmm. and um, we started twenty third and got up the. At that time, we were fourth and Billy was third. But they let you change tires. You can't add oil, but you could change tires. Okay. Well, Billy and them they bolted softer tires on, and when they restarted. Once we got going, I'm like, where's Billy at? And here, he's leading it and going. <laughs> it took me a couple laps to get going, but we were re reeling back in at the end, but ran out of time. But, you know, it, that was a blast, you know, from 23rd to 2nd, that deal. That was like my second time ever running without a wing. So, that what, was a blast. What you think about it back then, with taking the wing off with the, the cars the way they were back then? Well, we had a, a guy that helped us a, you know, a decent amount of times, and George Gillespie, who owned Pro Shots. Okay. And, and the year before, we did it, and he kind of reamed us out for not doing it right. <laughs> yeah, we just we took the wing off, and we didn't have different front axles or anything. So the second time we did it, we, we did a little bit more right, and he kind of got his head in the right way. and wasn't bad. But the funny thing about that whole night was we didn't time good, and we were starting up front in the heat race. And we were backing the car off, and I'm sure Bud don't remember this, but Alan would. We're backing the car off, and I'm in there for my heat race. They're backing it off, and I hear this clunk. I said, what's that noise? And I hear him doing something, something. I said, what did you guys do? Here, the inboard caliper broke off it as we were backing yeah. off. So they put something in it and tied it up. And they said, go out and run the heat. I said, without the inboard caliper? And they go, yeah, because they were afraid we were starting to front the heat. Mm -hmm. And they figured out it was the only shot we had at qualifying. Mm -hmm. Well, let's say I was last before we ever hit turn one. Because <laughs> 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 with a left front break only that... And back then, the left front brake was just for show because they didn't do nothing. Right, right, right. Oh, I had no brakes, so we didn't qualify. But then we started back into B-Main. Not sure how far back. And we end up getting 
qualified in the last lap or next to last lap in the B main. And then we were pretty good in the B and we were pretty good the whole time in the feature. But, I mean, it's a little different back then because nowadays those guys can run those cars so hard yeah. now compared to what back then. You know, back then, you, know, you look through the history, actually, wing guys have a lot of success at non-wing events, big events. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Big racetrack. Frankie Kerr was really yeah. good at Eldor without a wing, and you would never picture that. Right. Um, but them guys nowadays are so different, so good, and you know, I would love to do it at certain places um, if I knew it was going to be slick, like Port Royal or mm-hmm. the Grove. If I knew it was going to be slick, but them guys like at Lincoln and Grandview and Susquehanna, you know, if there's something for them to lean on, they can run those things mm-hmm. so hard. Yeah. And get around so good. Yeah. And. I- it's really changed, you know, to nowadays. There's cars especially made for that. I don't know if you really could take the wing off a car nowadays and run USAC with it. Well, guys still do, but there's a little bit more change mm-hmm. you, you would do to it nowadays. But, you know, it's just, it's just like anything else. It's like the late malls and the non-wings up that, you know, they're so fast now. Yeah. You know, I mean, they, they've gained traction through different things, shock packages and just everything. So it's it's a little harder for somebody to... Go from one realm to another realm and be very successful at it. No doubt about it. In a, in a one-time deal. Right, 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 right. You know, well, people always ask, why Why did you get out? I don't want to say you fully got out of the sport, but you, you still go. We still see you at the races. You just said you went to Mansfield last weekend. But why did you want to get out of it as a car owner? Well, I um, sold my business, and you can't. Race on Social Security. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're right on that. You know, uh, after I did race a little bit, if you remember, I had paint on my trailer at Social Security Express. <laughs> Back in 2000. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Wow. Kurt Michael drove. Yeah, right, yeah. right, right, right. Yeah, so that so you just, yeah, that's why you got out of it. You sold well, the business and, yeah. I mean, how are you going to pay for $60,000 motors drawing Social Security? You don't want to... Use up all the money you saved right. your life to retire on. Right. I mean, you had to be a multimillionaire to do that. Is that how much motors were back then? Well, or the, was going a rate of money? The miles? last motor I had was 42000 Now they say they're like sixty-five. Yeah. yeah. I yeah. would say probably realistically but 60 That motor would outrun any motor yeah. in the country. That one I had that $42,000 on. The, the old mean, Kreiner the, motor? I would, Kreiner? I would say yeah. the average motor now is probably sixty. In the high end stuff, seventy to eighty, probably. Do you think that's what's really quote unquote hurting our sport? Oh, yeah. yeah, I'd say so. Yeah, I mean, there, there's a lot of things that hurt our sport, but the motor cost got pretty got outrageous, mm-hmm. and um, you know, the weight rule came along a little too late, probably. And that that that's one reason the motors got more expensive was weight, mm-hmm. and then just everything. Yeah, you know, it's just like anything else right. in life. Everything's got more expensive, but the purses don't go up. You yeah, know, it's, it's no different than your regular job or anything else. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, it's just it's a tough deal. You know, all racing is tough deal to you know. It don't matter if it's a three hundred five or whatever. It's all expensive to a certain point. So. Yeah, right. But well, I, I don't think TV added anything to it. You can sit at home now and watch it on TV. It, that had to hurt some. Well, I remember reading an article, I think it was in the Sprint Car and Midget magazine. That, that was not too long ago, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, not, not too long ago. And I want to say it was Johnny Herrera, I think they interviewed or somebody. And he potentially thought when TNN came back in the day for the World of yeah. Outlaw, so maybe that kind of hurt the sport because now with these guys having not like a trailer, you guys have a, getting a bigger. Everything went bigger when TV came in, and they think that maybe potentially hurt the sport because guys were spending more money. Well, what do you there's think? a couple ways to think about that. First of all, it's easy to get a trailer. Right. <laughs> you know, people can sign their name and finance a trailer. You don't sign your name and finance a motor. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I, I mean, look how many decent-sized trailers so-called low-buff teams have. Yeah, you know right. I mean? um, the difference is, if you look throughout the years... Yeah, I use him as an example. There was nothing fancy, yeah. rig wise. Mm-hmm. You know, he got a new feather light, and but that wasn't evilly bad for the time. The trailer, well, but you had to, he had the other one for God, I forget how long. I mean, before I ever started driving for him, mm-hmm. so it wasn't you know, you know these guys. Some people spend more on trailers than what you know some teams race on a year. So yeah. it's just a tough deal. Yeah, everybody has their own. Things, but the problem nowadays is 
you can't start like how I started. Yeah, it's very hard. You, you never, nobody will be able to showcase their talent if they have talent or not. Yeah. and that's what makes it so hard. And it's just, it's not as much of a working man sport. You know, like Bud, who worked hard his yeah. whole life, could done it. For him to do it now, even if he was working hard now and start from scratch, it'd be very hard for him to do it. I, I would think. You yeah. Know. Do you miss that side, the car owner side aspect? Oh, yeah. yeah do yeah. you miss that a little bit? The only thing I don't miss is the 30th of the month when I get those bills. Yeah. <laughs> and then you got to sign Yeah, that, that can suck a little bit. Yeah, no doubt about it. Now, where do you think the sport is today, buddy? You know, it's completely different from when you got out of it, what, some 15 years ago. Where do you think the sport is now? Well, I think each year it's going down because the car count's going down. Uh, when I first got into it, there was 60 or 70 cars at Williams Grove on Friday night. Well, look, now they already have a full field. Mm -hmm. It seems to me like every year is getting less. So uh, there's a lot of things involved in this. You've got kids' sports. you got people going to, just like Lance's mm -hmm. boy, playing the sports. And everyone's grandkids is doing something and they want to see their grandkids so they go watch soccer or baseball or whatever the kids is doing and that all pulls away from racing. There's more things to do now than there used to be. You are right Ed, because I remember my dad used to make a time mm -hmm. when it was race season mm -hmm. we'd go to the Grove every Friday mm -hmm. and switch it up on Saturdays and maybe go to Big Diamond on Sundays mm -hmm. you know and you hit the nail right on the head you know there's so much more to do now, oh, yeah. and, and kids just seem like they don't want to come out on regular shows anymore. Well, What's your thoughts? The kids nowadays, attention span is really short, mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, um, and um, that makes it hard for any auto racing, sports, um, baseball is really hurting because of that, um, NASCAR is hurting because of that, you know, football, it hurts some, but not yet, yeah. but that's not a young kid's going to watch type of sport yet. Yeah, right. right. And but yeah, you know, there's so like Bud said, there's so many variables. You know, another variable nobody thinks about is there's so much racing now. Yeah. Yo, know, there there I mean like when I started, I had two options. Super sportsman or sprint car. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, take my three years in micros out. But when I decided to quit micro racing and move up, I had two options. Super sportsman, sprint cars. Mm -hmm. That's it. Think about it now. You got sportsmen, sprint, sprint cars, 360s, four, um, 358s, 305s. You got some non wing classes now. Plus all your micros, your 600s, yeah, your go karts, your, whatnot. Your go karts yeah. and everything else, and your slingshots and your, yeah. your all that. There's so much racing now. If you go an hour radius of Harrisburg, mm -hmm. think about the racing in one weekend. Oh, yeah. yeah. You're between everything. And he, here's what, you know, talk about all the time. Some of these 305 teams, these 358 teams, are spending as much money on their motor program as what you could spend on a 410, and they only race for half as much or as quarter as much. Well, the 305s don't. They, they got pretty strict rules on 305. With sealed, sealed head, sealed motors, right. Yeah, but. And, and just how they're not a bad car. Yeah, 358, 360 guys, they're, they're, they spend a lot of money on engines that um, it's not much. Now, the operating costs are a little bit it's mm -hmm. a little different. But the payoff's a lot different yeah. from the 358 and 410. And, you know, the car counts vary all the year. Um, yeah, they go down, then a couple guys move up, and they come back up, and you lose a couple guys, and it takes a year or two for somebody to replace them. But, you know, it's, you know, the car counts still don't create the good racing. Right. You're, yeah. yeah, if you have 20 great, if you have 20 cars there that produce a good racing, people don't care if it's 20 or 30. Mm -hmm. well, all it's good fine. racing. Right. And that's the biggest thing. And that's to me, you know, if if the tracks are not producing good racing, it's it's that's one of the things that hurt them. And and T V hurt them, I think, because T V did Sprint Card no justice. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There there is a TV cannot show you the speeds yeah, that right. we run in the, the when you're there to see it. And it just don't do it justice in my opinion. And um it never helped it. Yeah, you know, everybody it didn't help local racing. Yeah, I don't know if it helped Outlaws or not, but it never helped the local racers. Oh, there's, I mean, there's nothing like standing on the hill on Friday night and watching this come barreling in turn three. <laughs> you can't get that sense on TV whatsoever. But your point there, Lance, about there being too much racing around the area, you're right, because you look at it on a Saturday night, 
Look how many tracks from, like you said, a two mile radius. You have Lincoln, you have Port Royal, and if you want to go out further, you have Granby, you have um, Blanco, Sealands Grove. Grove. You have a ton of tracks that can run here. Now, Bud, back in your day, you also had that where you had a ton of tracks running. Why do you think it's more of a problem now than what it was back then? Does the cost have something to do with that? Well, we, you don't have as many cars to divide up for one thing. Mm -hmm. uh, back. Uh, Oh, I'd say in the 80s, it seemed like all the promoters was working against each other. If Port Royal had a spatial race, Lincoln would put on a spatial race. Now they have wised up mm -hmm. and they're working together more. If you have the touch score of 50, Lincoln's shut down, they yeah. don't run sprints that right. night. And they are working together a little bit and that, I think that is saving racing a little bit more than what it used to be. But he's right. Like back when they had all three tracks running on the Sealers Grove, Lincoln, and Port Royal run on a Saturday yeah. night. They could care less about each other. Yeah. yeah. And right. which d didn't help the sport either. Right. right. I mean. But yeah, you can get a full feel back then. That's too. why they didn't worry about it. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. But if, if, you, if you could picture if those three were to get together and work back then, oh. and what some of the shows they could have created between those three racetracks, and the other ones shut down on given nights mm -hmm. and, you know, during the year, it, it, it really would have done the racers a lot of good. And the racetracks, I think, a lot of good. Yeah, no doubt about it. Now, but what um, what do you think is next for the sport? Do you think that it's going to be going away in a few years? Or do you think that maybe it might have some kind of resurgence here or uh, with some new technology up down the road? I just wonder how long we're going to have 410 racing. Yeah, really? really? That's what I've been thinking. Uh, going to lower... Money mm -hmm. car three hundred five, right? Or, yeah, yeah, or something cheaper because not too many people are going to spend sixty or sixty five thousand for motors. No, and you know what, Lance? We talk about that too. It's like, do you think maybe ten years from now, fifteen years from now, the three sixties will be the headliner? Well, and, and that we might if, only have special shows for if, the four tens. If they are, the motors will be just if not more than what they are now. Yeah, yeah that, and one of the problems with the three sixties is they let them let them get out of control yeah. for being a quote a limited type engine. Um, you know, there's you know, there's some stuff gets done with those heads that you could question if they're legal or not. And I think everybody lets them go now because they're everybody's doing it. Mm -hmm. And that's the problem with rules and when you don't enforce rules and when you don't. Yeah, you know, the nice thing about four ten is. Our rules are pretty simple. Yeah, we right. We got a weight rule, we got a QB inch rule, yeah, injector size rule, but they're a pretty simple rule. It's pretty easy for somebody to tech this thing. Yeah. You know I mean? Back in, I guess it was late 80s, they came out with that 312 motor, mm -hmm. Sprints. Well, that was to save money. Well, I heard Bob Weir say one, and he was laughing about it. This was supposed to save money. Now I'm putting more money in the heads I used to put in the whole motor yeah. to make them run. Mm -hmm. Right. So, but cut, it, cutting down on horsepower, I mean, size of motor didn't help. No. It's hard because you you can't stop people from spending money. Yeah, you know, right. Yeah. That's where it's hard at. And, um, you know, the, the, the funny thing about the weight rule was before we had a weight rule, everybody would spend money to be the same weight anyhow. Mm-hmm. But we're just everybody just spending more money for no reason because everybody was light, mm -hmm. but everybody's spending the same amount. Right, know? right, right. So the weight rule helped our sport some. The the tire rule has helped it a little bit. The tires worn now, I think. Um, but it's just it's hard to go backwards. It's really hard to go backwards. Well, and, it it depends on how bad you want to win. I won to win. I didn't want to run the back. And right. I, I was willing to put the money out to win. Uh, people told me, he said, I'm not putting the kind of money in the motor you put in, but they had a $100,000 motor home. I didn't have it. <laughs> it a, you, put, you put your money in the car. I yes. put my money under the hood. They put their money in the motor home. And but, you know who I'm talking about, too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we do. Well, well, that's another conversation for another day. But, um, yeah, it, it, that's what's so hard. You can't stop people from spending money. Mm -hmm. You know, um, so it's it's tough. It's tough. Yo, yo, it it went down and it kind of went back up a little bit. Now it seems like we're down a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, you just never know. Yeah. Well, I went to Orioles game last night in Baltimore. There was four, only 14,000 people there. So mm -hmm. race is not the only thing to suffer. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You're right. You're, well, you're then again, the O's aren't playing the best baseball right now either. <laughs> so, <laughs> hey, no. I'm just saying the truth. Um, no. Yeah. 
talk about rivalries. You know, people say they want to see more rivalries in the sport like there were back in the day. I don't think there was really a whole lot of rivalries that was in the public eye. You know, but who, car owner wise, maybe driver wise too, who do you think maybe was quote unquote a rivalry to you when you guys used to hit the racetrack? Did you have any car owners that you'd be like, Man, you, Lance, you really got to beat that car? <laughs> you know, did you have anything back then, or you just everybody well, was the same and you I you think win? You always want to beat the best car. Yeah, I mean, we wanted to beat Shots or uh, Kinzer. Them's the ones we wanted to beat. Yeah, because uh, it meant more. Yeah. When the World of Outlaws came in town, I mean, they were the best of the best. They're still the best of the best, yeah. you know. That's They're best when it comes to that, and that was your goal just when they came into town to be. Yeah, them. I think that's locally wise. That's, you know, I grew up racing, me and Fred raced together our right. whole careers. Right. You know, I raced against Todd Schaefer our whole, whole career. Mm -hmm. You know, there's a lot of wins between me and Fred mm -hmm. together, you know, in, mm -hmm. in the same racetrack. So, um, you wanted to beat him, but I've never worried about beating a certain person or car. Mm -hmm. um, I'm more worried about just winning that night. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And when the outlaws come down, us come down, us local guys want to beat them. It don't matter who it is, we want to beat them. Um, and that's just pride, I think, more than yeah. anything, yo. And you know, we're fortunate enough in Central PA to guys have beaten them mm -hmm. a decent amount. You know, I mean, probably more than most any other place in the country. So, you know, we've been very fortunate with that in our area. But that also speaks a lot with our owners and mm -hmm. drivers, and you know, we we get up for that. You know, yeah. we get up for that. So, well, you know. we always made sure we had a fresh motor in when the outlaws come, or our best motor, and our best parts on the car. Yeah, and yeah. kind of really no different than they do when they show yeah. up in two weeks. They, they'll they make sure want, have the they best want everything. Stuff. Yeah, no, no doubt about it. Now, well, if I say the name Bob Weikert. What does that name mean to you, racing against him? Well, Bob Weikert and I, were, we were always good friends. Mm -hmm. I mean, I never had any trouble with Bob Weikert. Uh, I took, I don't know, 30 new tires to Florida or something like that one year, and I thought that would be plenty of tires. Well, it wasn't. And I went <laughs> over to the Goodyear truck, and Bob Weikert was standing there, and I said to the Goodyear man, I said, would you take my check, my business check for tires? And Bob heard that. He said, whoosh the hell, he owed me a million dollars. I'd damn soon take his check. Well, <laughs> that's the way Bob Weiger and I was. We never had any problem. Yeah, yeah. If I, want, if I never did, but if I needed money, he'd have given it to me. Yeah, that, that's good. That's good relationships. Yeah, you know, I think Bob kind of got a little bit of a miss. Yeah, just because of how you acted in Victor Lane. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. And, and I think it was a lot of an act. Yeah, I agree. On, I agree. Mean? Yeah, he, he was there. to You either loved him or hated him. Stir up stuff. Stir up stuff. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and, yeah, he well, contributed to built the sport to what it was and is. And, you know, hopefully we'll get some new owners come in and keep it rolling. Hopefully. Definitely. Well, it don't matter whether you go to see them win or where you go to see them lose, as long as they're there. Yeah, right. I mean, just get them there, one way or the other. Yeah. And that's what Bob did. He got them there. Yeah, he did. Some went to see him win, some went to see him get beat. Hard <laughs> more went to see him get beat than win, but he got them there. <laughs> what was that story we had with Terry McCarl last year where he won at Lincoln and Bob Weiger challenged some guy in the stands or something like that to come down and fight him? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Terry McCarl was talking about that story yes. when he won. One night, and, and Bob said, well, if you don't like it, you can just come right down here in Victory Lane. Yeah, and I'm pretty sure he would throw it down. But another name we'll throw out here you mentioned here, too, is another man they'll be honored at the Williams Coast Speedway, I believe, in August. That's Al Hamilton. Now, Lance, you ran for Al um, for a number of years. What um, what does that name mean to you? Well, same as Bud's name in this sport. Yeah, they, you know, probably a lot of people don't realize how long Bud was in this sport. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's a disgrace to me because... You know, he'd done a lot for a lot yeah, of people. Right. Same way as Al did. You know, mm -hmm. Al was in a long time, and Al raced himself. Mm -hmm. So, you know, he's done a lot for a lot of people. So, you know, just any of these owners, you know, it don't matter who they are. You know, it don't matter if you don't like them. You still have to respect them and, you know, honor what they did and help with our sport. And, you know, there's a long list of owners like that. But, you know, Al and Weikert kind of were the headers, headliners. <laughs> Yeah, because they kind of had a little rivalry, I think, mm -hmm. back and forth, even though I don't think they did as far as personally. Right. But just, you know, I was a um, very quiet type guy, mm -hmm. but he kind of probably come across 
Um, then Bud maybe could speak a little different on this <laughs> to me. People probably thought he was more one way when he really wasn't. Mm -hmm. Where Wiker was so outspoken. Yeah. <laughs> you know, just, yeah, the pride of my head, the Wiker you know, stands. Yeah, I have a lot of respect for Al. Um, you know, he worked really hard in his life. Yeah. And a lot of people didn't realize, and I don't think Bud realized this until the article came out about him and learned about his life a little bit and how hard he really worked, just mm -hmm. like this man to my right well, did. He he told me all that yeah. about how he started yeah. with his pickup and go out to the mine, scrape up coal and go sell pick up loo. He he told me all yeah. about himself. So I mean it it's you know, Al probably don't people probably think Al the wrong way sometimes I think. Just because his demeanor and all yeah. but but you know, he's great for this sport, you know, just like all the others yes. are great for this sport. And you know, him and you know, him and the Wikers, you know, in the mid eighties, mm -hmm. you know, when Wolfgang was in driving Wiker's car and Kaufman was in Al's car you know, Wolfgang won what fifty three or whatever he won that one year. Well, Kaufman won thirty some, and yeah, and nobody, nobody noticed out. it. Nobody yep. noticed it. Yep. So it was just funny. You know, when you look back at that stuff, you know, basically it was those two that won most of the races, and then you know you sprinkled in all the others, you know, in, in amongst them. So no, yeah, you know, talking about you know this old girl right behind us and the other cars, you guys were good no matter what track you guys hit. But it seems like you were always really good at Williams Grove. Why do you take it such a good liking to that track? It's a hard race track. Yeah, I mean, you ask any outsider who comes mm -hmm. there. No, I'll it's, tell it's you how hardest it is. place to race. Yep. It, it's it's a unique place. There's no other racetrack like it in, that I've ever seen mm -hmm. or been to. Um, and it just takes a little get used to running, and you have to have back. And the cars take a little bit different things than, than maybe outside our area. Um, but if you look at the history there, you know, there's there are guys that run that place really well. I'm fortunate enough to be one of those guys, mm -hmm. along with Fred and you know numerous other. You know, Steve Kinzer's record there is unbelievable. Schatz's record there is unbelievable. So is Mark Kinzer's. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Mark would be the other one. You right. Know, outside. But, you know, it's just, it's a unique track. It's, it's a short track with drag strips. Yeah, yeah. So you have to have everything. You have to have motors that run, and you have to have cars that corner and handle. Right. Why'd you always take the car to the Grove on Friday nights? Because it was the only track that ran sprints on a Friday night, or did you have? Uh, did you like it too? Well, Williams Grove was kind of the elite track. I always kind of thought. Yeah. So. Uh, yeah. It was a little bit like any Napa's track of the of the East. Right. Right. I right. mean, there's so much history in Williams Grove, and it's just an honor to be at Williams Grove. And I want to thank Williams Grove for what they're doing for me on the 25th, too. What you think about when Justin Lowe or Kathy Hughes, whoever called you and said, Hey, we're going to do a race. You'd like to come up. What, what was some of the emotions going yeah. through your head when they gave you a phone call? It, I've had a lot of those in my time, but that's just another one that made me feel great. Yeah. <laughs> I still think about the old man. Yeah, you're still great. Emotions for you when you found out that they were going to honor Walt at that race. Well, I probably knew before he did. I'm sure, I'm <laughs> sure you did. But, no, you know, because um, it's funny because um, when Justin called me, he wanted to make sure if they added it, would we, I be there. And I said, you tell me when we'll be there. Yeah. I'll be there one way or another if, if you know, Kreitz and them didn't want to race it. But, you know, Kreitz wants to race it and honor him. And, you know, yeah, it, it's just an honor. You know, he, he's well deserving of it. Um, he's he's more than deserving to be in where I'm getting inducted in. in a I weeks. agree. Um, just because people don't realize what he has done in this sport, mm -hmm. because in a way we're a lot like we're very mild mannered and soft spoken and don't to our own, own horns. He don't get recognized for what he's done, but I guarantee you there's people in that Hall of Fame that has not done as much for the sport as he has for our sport. And may hopefully someday they'll they'll think about that and put him in there. Hopefully. Well, I didn't get in it for glory when I got in. I got in because I love racing. Mm -hmm. I didn't even think about Hall of Fame. Right? See, I got over there at Hagerstown Hall of Fame. That's yeah. a good while ago. Yeah. And that plaque. But that's not what I got in racing for. I got in because I love racing. You love just love the sport. But yeah. that's I mean in general I think that's what everybody does. Mm -hmm. You know. 
there ain't none of us. I mean, I, I guarantee you when Fred Raymer, well, first of all, when we both, me, me and Fred started racing, there was no Hall of Fame. Yeah. But, I, like I said, I've never thought about the Hall of Fame until a year ago when people started bringing it up and mentioning because I was eligible. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, two years ago, I didn't think about it. Yeah. I wasn't worried about it. Yeah. You know, I was just trying to race and, you know, be competitive and, you know, just want to race and, and, you know, it's just, it's going to be neat when it happens. Mm-hmm. But I can tell you right now, I'm going to be worried about my next race once that's over. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? And, um, you know, and it's going to be an honor to hopefully have him out there when I get inducted. And, you know, and, you know, hopefully, you know, down the road I can go out when he gets inducted. Now, for this special race, is the 69K going to come off and... Are the red bricks oh, gonna go I on and put a four sixty one because know. it's a throwback night? I don't know. We we have discussed that some with them. It's a tough deal because we got outlaws the week before. Yeah, 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 yeah. And, yeah, yeah. and, and we got three races for us, three races that weekend now. Mm-hmm. So it's a tough deal to you know see if that all can work in there. We we've been discussing a little bit, but we haven't set nothing in stone yet. I'm sure there's some red paint over in the garage. Here. You <laughs> find up. Well. Probably the red paint that might be over there. We're probably not allowed to use it anymore. <laughs> <laughs> they probably don't even sell so, that anymore. Yeah. Probably. Now, it's got plenty what, of lid in it. <laughs> <laughs> well, hey, that might weigh the car down nowadays. <laughs> now, Lance, let's say you win this race here. Would that be bigger than winning the National Open because of how much um, Walt means to you? No. <laughs> no. Well, I think I throw that out. <laughs> it would mean a lot to me. Yeah. Um, a lot to me. Mm-hmm. But... He he would agree with me. It's not bigger than we have, <laughs> but, uh, but it would it would mean a special place. Definitely. Yeah. And actually, if I get to win it, if I'm mm. fortunate enough to win it, my wife might let me keep the trophy or plaque that they get. Ooh. <laughs> she don't let me keep too many of them. Now. Really? Like, Why is that? Why don't she? But you already have enough of them to take enough room up in the house. Because of dust. No, oh, it's a dust collector. The first smart lady. Clean them. The first Very smart, smart lady. lady. <laughs> so, um, but no, it'll mean a lot to me. But over national, no, not over national. Yeah, I have to be honest. (laughs) Well, we were talking about before we uh, came in here is that Lance basically built this place in here um, in '97 with his win at the National Open '96. What made you want to build this place and then turn it kind of into a museum? Um, Was it kind of preserve the history that you guys had? Well, so much of my life was in racing that Mm -hmm. I just wanted to. Built something I remember mm-hmm. by. Uh, I come in here and look around and see all these different drivers I had, and my memory's getting bad, but I still remember a lot of this uh, when it happened. And it's a tribute to the fellows that helped me. Like Lance said, I never had fellows on the payroll, but I paid all their expenses and their meals and everything. We went away, and they enjoyed it. I paid their way of the races. I know one time we won uh, Florida. How many did come out there to Denny's that well, night? I don't know. <laughs> I know. Our Denny's trips after <laughs> after the night of racing at Florida was a nightmare. <laughs> my bill was about three hundred dollars. At a Denny's. After the well, race, we probably had twenty or thirty people. Oh, there. Okay. Yeah, right, right, right. Yeah, we right. We said it was a family deal. Yeah, well, well, that's a family deal. Well, he has family in Florida. Yeah, so of course he does. Bigger, they got bigger in Florida. Yeah. <laughs> Did you always enjoy going down to Florida in the beginning of the year? Yeah, if you do good. Uh, <laughs> I get down there and not do good. But, uh, Joey did good down there, too. Uh, on asphalt. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah he yeah. won on asphalt. Yeah. And then Lance did good. The uh, first, first year we went down there, they thought, I don't know where they got the eye that he's from California. He said, who's this kid from California? I said, well, he's not from California. He's from Pennsylvania. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they had it going. He's from California. I don't know who started that. But, uh, we did good. Anytime, I always wanted to do good. I'm a sore loser. Yeah. I'll yeah. tell you that. Yeah. But I think all owners are. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I mean, and I think you have, to a certain extent, you have to be to, to, to do this and to spend the money they're going to spend. They They have to... I don't want to say be sore losers to, to say, but you know, Bud was a sore loser, but we moved on past it, and you know, it, it didn't linger. Um, but anybody that was competitive is a sore loser. Some people show it different than others. Right. You know what I mean? But everybody that's competitive is sore, sore losers. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. 
on the way down, we were talking about some race and, and then some race tracks that aren't around no more. Uh, you guys were good at Penn National. You, you, know, you, guys, <laughs> you guys were really good at Penn National. Um, we were also talking about Syracuse. We'll start off with this. What kind of prep did you have to do as a driver into the car, like aerodynamics, on a high-speed track like that? What kind of maintenance did you have to put in throughout the week to well, get ready for a big track, one mile track like Syracuse? We had a spatial body. The underneath the car was all closed in and we had a nose that just had a round hole in for the air to go in and everything was aerodynamic for uh, Syracuse. Anything to get a little extra speed. I guess you know, first time Lance Surrey set fast time. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. And, uh, so it, I think he got a little bit scared when he had to go to the outside to pass, and uh, we ended up third or fourth. But anyway, we ended up third in the future. Uh, yeah. We were the fastest car. Uh, but that year, that very year, was Steve Kinzer and Howland Shield was running each other and running the place like they're all quarter mile bullring up on the curve, up on the berm, hey. like hitting each other. Oh. And I'm sitting there in third, just waiting on the rack. Yeah, <laughs> just, <laughs> but, um, yeah, Syracuse was neat. Um, it was really fun to qualify on. Yeah, the racing wasn't right, great, right, but it's different. Like after we quit running there, I learned so much more about how I think we could have been way better being yeah. there. Um, but I wouldn't want being one now up there. Right. It, it, well, it's not there anymore. No but right, it just it, they would be way too fast. I mean, Pouch holds the record. I think of one forty one mm -hmm. average. Mm -hmm. We yep. average that at Volusia County now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, that's a fast it, place, and that's I, a half mile compared yeah, to the mile. I, I, you know, Syracuse just would be way too fast on one of these things. That the car is not built for those type of speeds, and you know, hand, you know, anybody that wrecks there, it's going to be really ugly. But and that's why they quit running. That, you know, right. That's why they quit running there. Was that always a fun weekend? Because that seems like that whole week. You know, I guess you guys had the modifieds on the program as well. Was that always a fun week that you guys look forward to going up to Syracuse? Yeah, because it was a, like a family weekend. Yeah. Uh, my whole family went and Lance's family went. It was it was more than just racing. It was <laughs> family outing. Uh, we had different places like that. We enjoyed racing Florida because stayed at my sister-in-law and she cooked for us. And, <laughs> uh, our racing was a lot family oriented, yeah. more than most people. Right, right. And there's uh, that word family again. Yeah. Now, uh, do you think because well, one reason why I think we were so popular, my wife loved kids, and she was always doing something for the kids. Kids, yeah. Just yeah. like I was always sorting them papers, and she, well, she taught Sunday school class for 30 or 40 years, and kids, and she just loved kids, and she catered to kids, and I think that's one thing that made us popular. Yeah. And it helps. Yeah. That and the dog. Yeah. And the dog. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, right, 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 right. Good old sugar. And, man. of course, winning don't help hurt anything. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. No, it doesn't. Now, another chapter we just talked about here, Penn National. I am, I that came along just before I really, or went away before I got in the race in here. Do you guys have any really good memories about Penn National? I know, Lance, you were really good down there for a number of years. I love that place. Mm -hmm. um, I think we ran, I ran there five times with three wins in two seconds. That's a pretty good record. And, and I love that place. And It was a big old flat racetrack. Yeah. And, and yeah. I've always liked flat racetracks mm -hmm. because you, you have to drive the cars a little, mm -hmm. little bit more than a banked racetrack where the corners help you keep hooked up and all. And it was just a great racetrack. Um, it's a shame we don't race there. You get get away with it. But um, there's a lot. Yeah, I love Grandview. Mm -hmm. I really do love racing Grandview. And, of course, my record there is not bad either. So, yeah, I yeah. see the two paychecks hanging up yeah. here. That's it. Um, um, and I think we're tied with Billy and Pouch. I think we're still tied with the all-time sprint wins there. So um, not a bad guy to be named with, no. you know what I mean, who wins in everything. So, yeah, there, I love. I like all racetracks. Mm -hmm. uh, there, I I can't sit here and probably tell you one I, I dislike. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, you know, there's some that you know. Poor Roll at one stage wasn't it was very bad, but she's, no, it, it was, was not bad. I mean, Bud's been there. We've yeah. been through that yeah. era. era. Yeah, you know, now it's recognized as one of the best tracks in the country. Right, you know, right. definitely one of the best tracks local. Um, yeah, everybody goes through those stretches, but yeah, I I like racing, just racing in general, all race tracks, and you know. The, the years that I ran, the year that I ran with the All Stars. Yep. Trust me, you learn to respect our oh, stuff yeah. in here once you oh, go outside yeah. this area. And 
even you know, outside of Ohio, Ohio has some pretty nice racetracks. But you get outside of Ohio, Illinois, Illinois, yeah. Michigan. Yeah. There's some, there's some, yeah, some places there that they go race. It's not very good. Um, we're very fortunate. You know what I mean? Well, imagine some of the places that you're talking about out in the Midwest or like Illinois. Imagine some of the places the outlaws go to. I mean, they're not really sprint car tracks. They're late model tracks. Yeah. They're not meant for the 410. Yeah, but not even so much that. Just, just. Just some of the facilities mm-hmm. and the tracks themselves are not very good right. shape. That's what um, you know makes me mad a little bit when our fans start to get on social yes. media and, and yeah. really undermining the tracks here. And yet a lot of them haven't traveled like they've been fortunate yes. like us and see Be some cool. other facilities. Yeah. Yes, and yeah, you know, yeah. Some of our tracks are not putting on good racing right now. Everybody goes to it. Yeah, you know, the stages. Yeah, you know, everybody goes to it. But they still race. They still open the gates up mm-hmm. and race. Yep. And and you know. You can't bash them for that, and you know, I'm glad to see certain drivers are actually starting to thank the racetracks a little more than you know they used to on social media. Yeah, you know, <laughs> yeah, it just you know, everybody's gonna have bad nights, bad weeks, bad years. Us as drivers have them, mm-hmm. owners have them, racetracks gonna have them. So, yeah, and fans have them. So yeah. I mean, yeah, you know, it's just an honor to be racing with all of them. Did you have any special tracks? That you really look forward to going to, or you still think about uh, nowadays? I probably had to lean toward Port Royal a little bit. Yeah? Or Ways Grove. I really didn't see much different. Yeah, right, right. I right. never like small racetracks. I like show off our motors a little bit. Mm-hmm. Get on those high speed paper clips and get, get him going. Yeah. Yeah. So you like to see, you know, a little bit more of what your car could do rather than what the driver could do, correct? Why, why is that? <laughs> I guess you don't want the driver to get ahead of you. <laughs> <laughs> Is that true, Lance? <laughs> uh, we just let it go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was told to respect my elders. So yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Now, oh. I see how this thing goes now. This is great. This is I good stuff. This is good stuff. Well, boys, I'd like to thank you very much for inviting us well, up here. For coming over. This to is your home. Absolutely. Take it for again, building schools. I was building a school in Greencastle, and Lance was working down in Frederick, and he came up to get a Cuba block, and uh, of course the law is you got to tie him down. Well, I think it was a female trooper, wasn't it? I don't know. Got you in. I paid a ticket for that. I did you? <laughs> Unsecure load. Unsecure load. <laughs> this is not the first time you ever had to pay a ticket. <laughs> Uh, now, once, yeah, go ahead. Now, did you, before we let you go here, did you actually build where the this all started at over here? Did you build the garage over here? Yes. Yeah? That house is about 200 years old, but mm-hmm. I rebuilt it. It's, uh, it, the foundation of that house was three brick thick, I mean the first floor, and the second floor was two brick thick. Mm-hmm. Well, now the first floor is four brick thick, and the upstairs is three brick thick, because mm-hmm. I put... Two inch insulation against the old brick. Yeah, 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 yeah. So in other words, when there's a tornado or anything, that house ain't falling. This house come to. No, nothing's gonna fall in this town, <laughs> is it? No, no doubt about it. Well, like I said, thank you very much for inviting us into your home and into your little museum, Lance. Thank you for taking some time out of your busy schedule and coming on. Good luck to you and tomorrow night. Thank you. Once again, folks, that's gonna wrap up a special edition of PA Sprint Car Live right here on Bear Hill Gang TV. That's Bert. I'm Earl, of course. Soon to be Hall of Famer Lance Deweese and hopefully soon to be Hall of Famer Walt Dyer. Put him in. Yes. Anybody watching from Knoxville, you need to induct this man. He has done a lot for our sport. But that's going to wrap it up, folks. We'll see everybody tomorrow night at Williams Grove.